Extreme Festival is brought to you by Cecil, GNH Transport, Red Square, and Investcam. Welcome to round seven of the Extreme Festival down here at the East London Grand Prix circuit, one of the fastest circuits in the country. And a fantastic crowd gathered here to watch what has been one of the most successful uh, motorsport events in the country. It was a fantastic display of Audis and lots to do. Like we said, Extreme Festival, and that's why all the people roll in to this fantastic form of motorsport. National production cars would be up first, and this is the one everyone has come to watch. Some of the fastest drivers and the biggest names in motorsport in the country. It'd be a big test to see who could hold their nerve going through this very, very fast former Grand Prix circuit. Drivers out onto the track for qualifying. And straight away, Shoal Smallberger would set the pace ahead of Simon Moss. Michael Van Rooyen was all very close. All the guys in the 129s literally just split seconds between the drivers. Michael Steven would be in fourth place. Henny Kronovoltz, Graeme Nathan in sixth. Let's catch up with pole position man, Shoal Smallberger. My dad came onto the radio and said, listen boy, you're on a provisional pole. in the season that we've had, but uh, just a big thanks to the whole team and all our sponsors and Paul for helping us get it, for helping us get it, get here on Paul and looking forward to the races. Well, qualifying is done and dusted and it's time for the real thing now. Racing about to start. Henny Kronovelt making his way to the line, the championship leader, hoping for a good race. Rob, welcome to the studio. Time to talk about cars this time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Shoal Smallberg, I really can't believe that lap time he set at 29.3 in qualifying. So really the man to beat there. Simon Moss, Michael van Rooyen and Michael Steven just behind him as we head down the straight into Pontus Pass for the first time. And like you said, championship leader Henny Kronovelt has all the work to do and he's got Michael van Rooyen in the chef just ahead of him. Well, good start up in the front from the pole position, man, exactly where you would like to be as they go into turn one. Simon Moss in the mix and a great start from Michael Van Rooyen in the Chev. We're on board with Michael Steven now as they go down through uh, Potters and through the right hander through Rifle. They're going to be hard on the brakes into Coco Banner. Look at this. We're going to see eight cars abreast into the tight right hander onto the back straight. Does it all work out? Looks like it does. But that man, Henny Krunewald, is in all kind of trouble. He's being passed left, right and centre. And that's our supermoto man, Owen Bridger, in the beautifully prepared Honda Civic there. Right behind John Dutoy as well in the number 33 on board with Owen Bridger. They're battling out in Class X. But let me tell you, these guys are circulating very, very quickly. Back with the action in the front, Rob. It's getting close. Oh, beautiful slow-mo as they come into the infield for the first time on board here with the DJ Gennaro Bonafidi. As they go left, they're going to flick it right hand. Just watch how they have to fight the cars in the right hand as they head up the hill. Graham Nathan here in the Golf GTI. And as you can see, he's fighting that steering wheel all the way to the top of the hill. Then it's the tight right hander onto the long front straight. Well, some big G-force here for the guys up in the front, really having to fight the cars on the circuit. But a fantastic track for these guys to really put their foot down and experience what these cars can do. Charles Smallberger, I think surprising everybody up in the front. Good pace down here at East London. Yeah, the Audis really do look like they're struggling to keep pace with Charles Smallberger in his Golf GTR at the front. On board here with Michael van Rooyen in the Chev up to six gear. They're going to try and hold it flat out through Potter's Pass. And that is on board there with Henny Kroenewald, championship leader. He's running in a fourth place at the moment, but that's not good enough for the championship he's got to get past Van Royen and Simon Moss just ahead but Smallberger at the moment is out of here well good to see that uh, Gennaro Bonafidi has made a decent start from uh, down in seventh place is up with the pack now he's gonna have to try and make a few passes and he does so there we see them coming out of the turn oh something goes wrong with Henny Kroenewald he gets it completely sideways looked like Michael Van Royen maybe missed a gear there and Henny Kroenewald had to take evasive action and uh, couldn't make the pass though we're going to look further down. Simon Thiessen, the local man, is leading the uh, X-Class at the moment. But as we watch the leaders into the infield, Michael van Rooyen after missing that kill. And Scholl Smallberger is out of here. They're coming through the infield now. And that's Simon Moss right on the tail there of Grindelwald. As we go on board with the Audi man as he flicks it right here. You're going to see he's going to get all kinds of bumping. He's got out of shape. What has happened to Simon Moss? Oh, 
He gets onto the grass and it's slippery and he's tumbled the car. So that's a big accident there for the Audi driver. And Charles Smallberger must have looked in his rearview mirror and thought, uh, what is that Audi doing tumbling away there through the right-hander? Well, that was a big one and uh, sad for the man that was probably hoping to get away with a win. Let's take a look at that replay. Oh, something goes wrong. It looks like the left rear wheel breaks off. That is a very, very strange thing to happen there and right in the wrong place. So unfortunately, the hotshot favorite on a track he knows so well is out of this one. I do not want to get the panel beater bill for that car, but we're going to have to wait to see if the team can get that car ready for race number two. And Charles Smallberger, our leader, is off track and he's on the grass and it's very slippery out there. Can he bring it back? No, it looks like, oh, another big accident. He's tumbled that car big time. That Golf GTR is definitely second hand now. So that's left Henny Grunewald out front with Graham Nathan in the other Golf GTR that's still on four wheels out in second place as we go on board here with the man leading. You see, he just gets on the grass. Now we've had a lot of rain and then you can see he's just lost all control of that Golf GTI and he's going to head straight towards the tyres. Oh, and that's a big one. That really is such a big one. Oh, what a pity there. He was really trying to get that car back on track. He had it full lock right. Wow, that was right through the tyre wall. Thank goodness for the tyre wall. Otherwise, it might have been up the bank and a little more serious. But uh, hopefully he's okay. And uh, the guys left on track must be wondering what is going on. Probably the best thing to do here is just finish this race. Uh, there's a, another man off the track, and that was Gennaro Bonafidi, who's now up into third place. And uh, he also had a little moment there. Well, that is Michael Steven. It's also got problems. That looks like a mechanical, though. As we drop down and look at some of the Class X drivers and uh, putting in a good performance there right towards the top. Simon Thiessen, like you said, uh, leading that one out. Owen Bridger, he's in second place. Have it, well, in fact, in third. Looks like he's having a big dice there with uh, Ian Riddle. So they're going to be fighting right the way to the line. On board with Simon Thiessen, one of the local guys. That is a BMW with a big V8 inside. It sounds absolutely awesome. And look at this now. That's Owen Bridger trying to make a move on the inside of Ian Riddle. Oh, no, he's not going to make that stick, but he's got the power maybe to get good drive onto the front straight, setting that slipstream and maybe make the move going into Potter's Pass. But on board you now with Graham Nathan. And he's got Henny Krunewald right next to him. It looks like he's going to try and go around the outside going into Potter's Pass. And looks like he's made it stick as we head into the final lap. And Graham Nathan in the Golf GTI has got the pace. Look at that. The Audi cannot keep up with the big man in his Volkswagen. Well, the GTRs are performing well down here at the coast. Great straight line speed as he made his way to the front. There's so nothing championship leader can do except sit in second place and hope for the best through some of the tight and twisties. And maybe he can pull off a win, but that GTR is looking strong. We're going to come up to some back markers now, so maybe that'll help Krunewald's challenge here on Graham Nathan going into the infield, but I don't think the back markers will play a role. Krunewald has got the distance on the brakes. He really is catching on the brakes, but just doesn't have that straight line or acceleration out. Oh, I love that shot from curb to curb in the infield section but we're going to head up now to the final couple of corners and Grunewald's got it all to do here heading into the final turn I don't think he's got enough well being the championship leader I'm sure he'll be content with second place he's seen all the carnage around and you can see it's still lying on the outskirts of the track so I think second will be a good place to finish uh, after all the carnage but to the man I have to say in third place Gennaro Bonafidi from seventh he's put in a stellar drive and Michael Steven, and we saw him unfortunately pull out earlier with mechanical drums, so not good for his championship. But it's Graham Nathan who's going to take the line ahead of Henny Krunewald and Gennaro Bonafidi. And Michael van Rooyen picks up fourth place after that action-packed race. Simon Thiessen with the win in Class X. Let's catch up with Henny Krunewald. Great drive into second place. We had a very quick VW chasing the Sassel car down and uh, sadly last lap he was just ahead of me going into Potters and could run all the way through um, leading on the last lap. So yeah, we'd have uh, preferred the win but uh, pleased to get a good uh, couple of points going into second place. One of the pre-race favourites, car looking very second hand, Simon Moss. After I think two or three laps I was coming out the complex and I, was, I came out at a nice drive and then as I, as I turned into the, the right end of the final corner out the complex, um, my left rear rim just disintegrated and sent me off the track and there was nothing I could do, put brakes on, but uh, it just went into those tyres so hard that it managed to tip me over and that was the end of my race. And to the man with the biggest smile, the race winner, Graham Nathan. Unfortunately, a little bit of uh, carnage in the race where uh, two of the guys fell off. Charles, unfortunately, had an accident, or so did Simon, but uh, yeah, I'll take this one. I'm stoked. It's uh, been a long time coming. The team's worked really hard. Um, yesterday we were even at a place where it's a case of, uh, are you getting too old for this game? But uh, I hope it's not the case. There were going to be a lot of repairs in the pits ahead of race two. Guys working frantically to get those cars all together. 
Smallberger unfortunately will not be making race number two after we saw that big crash that he had in his GTR. But the Audi team amazingly have got both their engine extreme cars out for race number two. Can you believe it? They've swapped the motor for Michael Steven and they've fixed that second-hand car of Simon Moss. As you see, the, the fans got treated to meeting and greeting the drivers out on track earlier in the day. But on board you now, race two, Gennaro Bonafidi, the grid has been reversed. So he is in second place. Ahead of him is Michael van Rooyen and he's got a great start already out front in that Chev and he's got a pack of Audis including that Golf GTR just behind him. Already up into third place. Remember, it was an inverted grid. So Graham Nathan showing you how fast that GTR is in a straight line. On board with championship leader Henny Grunewald, and he'll be trying to settle in there. He knows he's so strong at the end of races. He knows how to bring it through to the checkered flag. You really have to take your hat off to those uh, Audi engine extreme drivers. They've just literally just rebuilt those cars, hop straight in them, and they're back on the pace straight away. But like you said, Graham Nathan, the man to watch out for, he's got that really fast Golf GTR as they head into the infield section and already bumping and barging going on further in the field there between the Audi drivers. Oh, great slow-mo. Look at that. That was awesome sideways action there from Bonafidi as one of the engine extreme drivers on the inside of Krunewald there. So Krunewald not having it all his way here in race number two so far. Well, on board with Graham Nathan, just showing you how quick it is and a very relaxed, very experienced driver. We also saw there Simon Moss barging his way through, trying to make amends after that first race crash. Remember, he's got a lot of fans here that are hoping for a great result. Michael van Rooyen in that Chev is out of here. I cannot believe the gap that he's already got over the rest of the field and the Audi Extremes are onto the front straight here. Now they're going to catch Slipstream as we go back to the Class X, and it's that man, Ian Riddle, at the moment, out front. He's just ahead of Simon Thiessen and Jono de Toy, and Owen Bridger in the Honda has got lots of work to do. He's at the back of that pack as we onboard you with Thiessen down the straight, and look at the power of that V8. He's going to be hitting close to 220 k's an hour as they head into Potter's Pass, so you really need a, a big part of your anatomy to do that. Brave move there. Michael Steven up the inside of Henny Grunewald. As we go back to our race leader, that chef, Michael Van Rooyen, is checking out. Look at the Audi right behind him. That Simon Moss hasn't backed off the gas at all, but uh, he does have that GTR right on his tail. Graham Nathan is looking to repeat a race one win. Michael Van Rooyen has just set a 29.5 lap time, and that is why he has stretched the lead. That is lap record stuff. So it's up to the rest of the pack to really close down on the man, but at the moment, they're not doing so. Heading into the infield section, and Graham Nathan in the GTR also kind of stuck in no man land at the moment in third place but he's got to make up the gap as we go into the infield yeah it's Van Rooyen followed by Bonafidi with Nathan look at these cars bouncing as they hit it left and then they're going to go left again and into that fast right up the hill where Simon Moss we saw that big accident in race number one but keeping it on four wheels at the moment yeah tough weekend uh, race one we're going well and uh, motor just uh, let go coming out of Potter so not 100% sure what's wrong but uh, we'll analyze that later. You know, the team did a great job to take the motor for the, the second race. Well, we had caught up with Michael Steven before the race and uh, he had high hopes to come back from a race one disaster on board in this amazing Honda Civic. Look at the power, Owen Bridger down that main straight. He's got a lot of hometown fans. Good to see him going so fast on the main GP circuit. He's also done some laps around the motor track as well. It really does help when you've got that much horsepower under you to control. As car number 21, that's Simon Thiessen, another local man. He's hitting the Class X, but he's got Owen Bridger coming thick and fast. And oh, look at this into Coca Banner on the inside there. That was Henny Krunewald with Michael Steven just barging his way through down the back straight. Well, those two have been a lot mirror to mirror for most of the race, swapping positions and enjoying the front of the pack. When that chef gets to the front of Michael Van Rooyens, he doesn't look back. We saw it early on in the season at Swat Group. Once he got there, he's a hard man to catch and pass. So a great drive here in the second race, and he'll be happy about that. <laughs> I love seeing these cars just bounce from curb to curb on this infield. They're using every part of the track, trying to get as much of the track as possible to improve their lap time. It looks like that man out front, Michael Van Rooyen, as we head into the line, Last lap is going to go flag to flag. Simon Moss, a great drive from the man here to get it up into fourth place and potentially a third as we go on board here with Michael van Rooyen going past the back markers now and uh, the very courteous Michael van Rooyen as he gives a, a little hand to say thank you to the back marker. I'll see you later. Well, of course, always a very scary time of the race. You're coming into the last lap. You've been leading it since the start, and you've got a couple of back markers to deal with. Uh, Graham Nathan goes past the, the same back marker. He's still in a big race. He wants to get up there and make a race with uh, Gennaro Bonafidi, try and make a pass into second. He'll be thinking about the overall. So Gennaro Bonafidi in that second place, down into Coco Banner, and trying to get up on the inside. Oh, Gennaro Bonafidi runs wide. Looks like he might have some trouble there. 
and that is a car full of no gears. No, he's going through this, so still going. We'll wait and see what the problem is there, but it doesn't look like that car. Oh, in the background, that looks like Greg Maloney spinning off. And uh, as he was uh, probably just uh, trying to get out of the way of the front runners as they come through, makes his way off the circuit. Still got that big dash towards the checker flag, though back up in the front with Michael Van Rooyen. Look at the gap he's got down to second place, who is now Graham Nathan. And Bonafidi's definitely got problems because he has slipped from that second position and he's all the way down now. So Bonafidi has definitely got problems in that Audi car, Hovies. We're going to have to wait and see if he's going to make it to the line. And that's the battle between Henny Grunewald. He's trying to hold off Michael Steven there, but this man, Michael Van Rooyen, is going to go and touched in the seat. What an absolutely amazing drive by the young man in the Chevrolet to take race number two victory. There we go. The Chev takes the checkered flag. We have to say a great drive, Graham Nathan. It was a tough race for him ahead of Simon Moss. What a great drive. And here's Gennaro Bonafidi trying to make his way towards the checkered flag. It looks like he's got absolutely no gears now. He's going to have to look for reverse maybe, but uh, makes it to the checker flag, but in last place. So just to confirm, Michael Van Rooyen with the win ahead of Graham Nathan, Simon Moss and Michael Steven in fourth place. In the class X, it was Owen Bridger in the Honda that picked up the overall win. No, no, it went very well. Uh, home track's always an advantage when, you come, when, when, when you've got other people that are coming to race with you. So yeah, enjoy the race, went, went very well. A great return to form for the number 38, Simon Moss. Considering the role, I'm pretty chuffed. Happy I started her out at the back end and managed to come through and get a third. Uh, had a good race and yeah, I can't, can't complain about it. Hopefully the next one will be just as strong and get some more points. And probably the not so grumpy Graham. Let's catch up with him. Uh, team's working very hard. The Volkswagen product is doing exactly what it needs to do. It keeps just pumping out performance. Great car. Those Golf 6 is the business, but absolutely the business. The clear winner in race two was Michael von Rooyen. Let's see how it went. We got a very good start. Got managed to get a lead into Potters. Um, and yeah, I held that lead. I think the guys behind me fought a little bit, which was very fortunate for me. Uh, it gave, gave me some breathing space. And um, yeah, I just tried to keep the lead and drove flat out towards the, towards the end of the race. Well, Extreme Festival is all about entertainment, and that's what they've got from this uh, national production cars. Race three about to get started. That's that fantastic V8. And uh, we go along to the Audis. Some last minute tweeting to do from the VW team. They're hoping for an overall win with Graham Nathan. Onto the start line. What a cross star. Michael Steven, though, thumbs up. He'll be hoping to redeem himself on the front of the grid, Graham Nathan. And uh, he'll be a hard man to beat from there. That GTI has been in superb form. So underway with the final race of the day. And Graham Nathan, a great start on the inside. Henny Grunewald, though, we're looking to defend his championship lead. And he knows it's been a tough day at the track. Can he get a good result? Michael van Rooyen already making his passes on the Audis as we go through Potters. Oh, but runs wide. Definitely got it wide there. And he's off the track. So our race two winner who won by miles is not having it his own way in race number three. Not a good way to start your, your challenge to pick up the overall one. He's right at the back of the field. Wow, probably uh, his heart in his throat at the moment. He saw what happened to the other cars that ran off going through there and uh, managed to keep it all together. He's back on track, hopefully no damage, and uh, he'll try and make a race of it. Michael Steven on board. Always amazes me to see how relaxed the guys are in the car there. And uh, they're doing like 250 k's an hour. Even has time to scratch his nose. What a champion, but uh, not good news for the Audi drivers because that Graham Nathan Golf GTR is out front and already skipping and sliding his way through the infield. You can hear the crowd loving this action. Extreme Festival of Motorsport, always top class racing. And those three Audis are right on the tail of Graham Nathan as you see a beautiful instant replay of Graham Nathan getting that GTR all kinds of sideways. Well he would have scored maximum points in a drifting composition all the way on the outside all the way sideways good to see but good car control on board with Michael Van Rooyen he's trying to make amends for that uh, first lap little incident and going through all the class X guys we know this uh, Chevy is very quick so let's see if he can get up onto the back end of uh, the class A cars uh, and lots of chopping and changing Henny Kronovalds holding on to second for dear life and so we got the two uh, silver and black engine extreme cars trying to find their way through. Michael van Rooyen has got lots of work to do in that Chevrolet. He's, he's making a lot of passes, but he's got so much work to do. And I don't think he's got enough to catch this pack out front. At the moment, the Audis are still chasing that Graham Nathan GTR. And it's definitely a battle between Michael Steven and Simon Moss as we go on board here with Steven. Now just listen to this. Flat out. Pedal to the metal through rifle range. And then you clamp on those brakes down into second gear for Coca Banner. 
Well, we know that he can win from the front, and it'll be a good test to see whether he can fight from the back. Look at that, bumping and barging and swapping paints and pieces of cars flying off there. There's no love loss between uh, those three Audis, and uh, they're going for that man up on the front. They don't want to be held up. They want to make a, a good charge and hopefully take it away from Gray Nathan. Now, the Audi drivers will actually do well here to stick together and work towards getting up to Graham Nathan. But look at the cars just bouncing through the infield. Now, the, the Audis are really quick through the infield. You can see Graham definitely pulls a little gap down the straight. But through the infield here, the Audis are able to close that gap heading up into the final turn. On board with Michael Steven, of course, the Audis are running Quattro. And uh, they get very good through the Titan Twisties. But down the long straights, uh, the front wheel drive got a little bit extra. And it looks like it's getting very close. Henny Krunovalt on the inside, trying to get defensive. And the number 12 of uh, Michael Steven cannot get through there around the outside. And Simon Moss is just watching. He knows he's got a lot of support here, so trying to get through to the front and make a race of it. Times change. Uh, I've, I've had a good innings, uh, 30 years in racing. It's still going strong. But uh, this year I'm trying to put something back and... Uh, Looks, uh, take some of my old tricks and look if the guys <laughs> have caught up and uh, yeah, it's going well you know um, currently not too much happening uh, regarding the regs everybody's sort of uh, keeping in touch and uh, yeah it's this year a big learning curve for everybody next year a lot of changes uh, looking forward to next year for new cars but yeah all going well and uh, nice to be on the other side of the of the line for a change well, a man who certainly knows his Audis and a former racing driver himself, Chrissy Swanepoel, and doing a great job there in the factory Audi team. I love going on board here with Owen Bridger in this Honda Civic of his as he's trying to make through the field and he's it's coming into the infield section. He's on the brakes hard and he's battling there with Simon Thiessen for the Class X title. So, and he's got Ian Riddle just ahead of him there. So, great drive from Riddle, who's leading the Class X at the moment, but they've all just been passed by the hard charging Michael van Rooyen in the Chev. Well, let's go back to the start of the race where it all went wrong for race two winner Michael von Rooyen. Oh, looked like he just touched the back end of one of the Audis, couldn't get his line and uh, no, nothing else to do except go straight. Luckily, he kept it all together back onto the track and making a good race of it. Uh, nice to watch him go through the field. Henny Grunewald and Michael Steven are glued together. And Grunewald is riding all kinds of defense with Michael Steven. He just cannot find a way past the Cecil Henny Grunewald driver at the moment. So he's really got his slipstream here and trying to stick it on the inside. No, he's not close enough going into Potter's Pass. And Graham Nathan all the while is pulling out a massive lead. Well, there we go. Probably taking advantage of the fact that Audis have been glued together and uh, involved in their own little battle out there. Graham Nathan has been left unscathed as he goes down to the bottom of the track. But he's going to have to be careful. He's seen what's happened to the guys out there. If you just get it even slightly wrong, one wheel into the grass and it all goes array. Charles Smallberger was the first man to succumb to those uh, sort of problems in race one. But Graham Nathan keeping it all together. Check out Henny Grunewald's war wounds. And that's all from Michael Steven trying to keep him at bay. And Michael Van Rooyen done a great job. He's up into fifth place on track at the moment but he's got hard charging X class X cars Simon Thiessen Ian Riddle uh, and that man in the Honda Owen Bridger just behind it but Nathan as we go into the infield and the battered and bruised Henny Grunewald still on track there in second place and Simon Moss in a decent fourth at the moment well it's incredible how those Audis move back onto his tail just through that one little infield section they are so good through the corners and then unfortunately for them it's a long straight and a hard breaking onto another long straight and that's where that GTR is so strong onto the brakes Krunewald, this is where he makes up all the time. He's so good on the brakes into this final turn. But Nathan just keeps it planted and gets onto that straight as they head down to the checkered flag. And it looks like Graham Nathan in the GTR is going to pick up a win. We heard him say how he loves his new GTR. And you can see the East London circuit does as well as he picks up race number three victory just ahead of Henny Krunewald with Michael Steven in third and a great drive there from Simon Moss in fourth place. Well, driving on a circuit where many top, top Grand Prix drivers have driven before and some more big names in South African motorsport and Graham Nathan on top of the pile this time around. Henny Krunewald in second place, Michael Steven in third and Simon Moss in fourth place. Simon Thiessen picks up the Class X title again as we look at the championship and it's Henny Krunewald just now ahead of Michael Steven with Gennaro Bonafidi and not a good day at the office for him with Michael van Rooyen there in fourth place. Let's catch up with overall winner Graham Nathan in the Golf GTI. I love the racetrack, uh, my team's done a great job, uh, all credit to them, all credit to the product, this VW Golf has just pumped out performance all weekend, uh, every time we had a hiccup, unfortunately we lost one uh, uh, earlier this, this today when Shaw was out in front, he made, a, he made an error or something went wrong and he rode off the road, but uh, it'll be back at the next one and then they've got big trouble because they need two of them to contend with. 
Let's catch up with the two men at the top of the table, Henny Kroenewald and Michael Steven. Coming into the round, I think there's only three points in it. And, uh, you know, the DNF in race one, but there are drops and, and that's, so uh, it depends how you look at it. But uh, I think what's important, the championships are very close. And uh, at the halfway mark, uh, we're looking forward to the rest of the season. You know, it's been a great fight up until now and uh, we had two, you know, close races today. So looking forward to the rest of the season. Four cars cross the, crossing the line in probably a second and a half or so. And uh, you know, I think it's been, even though there's been some incidents today that were unlucky, um, I think we've seen a lot of good racing and uh, we've certainly enjoyed it. And maybe not uh, a total result that we we're looking for Cecil and Audi for today. We got a lot of front wheel drive cars that uh, did well today, but I think it was a, a really good mix. And uh, you know, I think uh, we've consolidated and it's still looking good for the championship. So uh, it's a tough fight, not just between Michael and I, but there's a few contenders.